YouTube, man. Y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy, Big One, man. And I'm back in the cut with another video for y'all, man. So, let's check this out. If you're new to the channel, I need you to uh, smash that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? Click that bell that's right beside it to be notified when I upload a video. Because you ain't going to want to see me upload a video in 2023, man. We taking over. We going up. That's the only way, that's the only way possible, you know what I'm saying? That's the only way how we looking at it, man. We finna take off like a rocket. One of these videos gonna hit, it's gonna hit a million, and we gonna go crazy, man. It's gonna be takeoff time. Look, get in that comment section below. Let me know what videos y'all wanna see. Follow me on my Instagram, all my social media in the description down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the family channel, and make sure you subscribe to my detailing channel. Links to them gonna be in the description down below. Uh, we finna react to the dark story behind Lil Durk and King Von's case. I ain't gonna lie, because I, I really don't know too much about this case. All I know is there was, like, something happened in Atlanta when one of them shot somebody and somebody got killed or some shit like that. So, we finna finally react to that, man. And, um, shit, y'all finna probably hear some shit that y'all never heard before. I, I Like I said, I never heard the full thing at all. I just remember when they was, like, they had got into some shit in, in Atlanta, do 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 when it happened, boo boom 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 But... Further ado, man, let's hop into this video because it is a little long and I don't want to keep y'all waiting. Let's get into this to this entertainment, man. Y'all hear the rain in the background? <laughs> we grinding, baby, grinding. 2019, Lil Dirk, King Von, and Bay Zoo would get into a verbal altercation with the man in the parking lot of the Far City, a popular restaurant located in Midtown Atlanta. The man, whose name was Alexander Weatherspoon, was a 23-year-old Vice Lord member and was known on the east side of Chicago for cracking cards and scamming. Witnesses say that the altercation would soon turn violent after 13 shots were fired, hitting Alexander Weatherspoon once in his femoral artery. Weatherspoon would then stumble across the road before collapsing in front of the One Cigar Lounge, traumatizing late-night customers. Witnesses would then scramble to call 911 while a SUV with 300 plastered on the side would be seen leaving the scene simultaneously. Emergency services and law enforcement would quickly arrive at the chaotic scene and immediately transport Alexander Weatherspoon to the Atlanta Medical Center for emergency surgery while detectives would begin to investigate the crime scene and speak to any possible witnesses. The on-scene investigation would reveal that 13 shell casings were found at the scene coming from both a pistol and a rifle. A 9mm handgun was also found nearby. This case would then go cold for about three months, but on May 4, 2019, King Vaughn would be tackled and arrested by the Chicago police on charges related to the varsity shooting back in February 2019. Nine days later, Bezu would also be arrested by the Chicago police with the charge being fugitive from justice, out of state warrant. Then on May 29, 2019, the Atlanta police would issue an arrest warrant for the final suspect in the case, Lil Dirk. The warrant would be charging Lil Dirk with five felonies, the major one being an attempt to murder charge. A charge of that sentence. Man, come on, go and get out of there. This usually carries 10 to 20 years in prison. The same day the arrest warrant was announced, Lil Durk would release a song titled, Turn Myself In, which included several dark lyrics referencing the situation. These lyrics include, Yeah, 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 heard the story, think I'm finished, free Vaughn, free Zoo, even though they got the same problem. I turned myself in tonight, head down with these cuffs on, just read my rights. The following day, Lil Durk would meet at his lawyer's office to do an interview with WSB TV, stating that he had nothing to hide and nothing to run from. Did you commit the other crimes of which you're accused? Oh, um, no. Lil Durk would then proceed to surrender himself to authorities at the Fulton County Jail later that night. King Vaughn, Lil Durk, and Bezu would all remain in custody until further notice. Lil Dirk and King Vaughn would finally appear in front of a Fulton County judge where they would go over the charges and briefly discuss the evidence they had for arresting Lil Dirk and King Vaughn. An Atlanta Police Department detective by the name of Jeffrey Churchill would take the stand and claim that one of the witnesses he spoke with was a female who was talking with Lil Dirk and King Vaughn on the 
incident took place. She claimed that a fight broke out in the car in front of them and then saw Lil Dirk pull out a firearm while shots could be heard. Detective Churchill then told the court that Alexander Weatherspoon also had a firearm with him at the time of the incident, and it is completely possible that Weatherspoon could have fired the first shot. Another interesting piece of evidence brought up in court was the fact that there was allegedly surveillance footage that would show an arm of an individual rumored to be Lil Dirks hanging out the window of a gray and red camo track off with 300 plastered on the side while firing a firearm. You see Mr. Banks' arm out the window firing several shots at the victim, towards the victim. Prosecutors would describe the case as gang-related and even had a Chicago police captain fly all the way down to Atlanta to confirm to the Atlanta courts that Little Dirk and King Vaughn are documented members of the Black Disciples. At the end of the court hearing, it was determined that Little Dirk and King Vaughn were to continue to remain in the Fulton County Jail. Six days later, at another court hearing, prosecutors would submit a request to Fulton County Judge Kevin Farmer to not give Lil Dirk bond and have him remain in custody until further notice. Judge Kevin Farmer would reject the prosecutor's request, claiming that even though the charges against Lil Dirk are serious, he will grant Lil Dirk a $250,000 bond due to the fact that he turned himself in and doesn't seem to be dodging any type of arrest as long as he wears an ankle monitor, follows curfew, and stays away from firearms. Later that night, Lil Dirk would excitedly go live on Instagram as he is released from jail. King Vaughn would also be released the next day on a $300,000 bond. While out on bond, Lil Dirk and King Vaughn were no longer able to speak to each other and both seemed to move a different type of way after their release. Lil Dirk would seem to slow down and focus more on his career. King Vaughn, on the other hand, continued to live a fast and dangerous lifestyle despite already beating a murder charge back in 2017. This arrest arguably brought the most mainstream attention King Bond has ever received at the time, furthermore skyrocketing his music career and street reputation. King Bond was still going back to Obla and hanging out with some of the most dangerous individuals on the streets of Chicago. See, I ain't gonna lie, that devil was fucking, uh... <clears throat> That was fucking King Von up, bro. He kept going back to the, you know what I'm saying? To the same hood and shit. Like, I understand, you know what I'm saying? Not forgetting where you're coming from and showing love, but shit, when you know you the main person that's having emotion and shit, you can't keep moving like that. You ain't gonna get blessed too many times, man. They one thing about it, God ain't gonna keep on saving you. You know what I'm saying? From trouble and everything. Only this time out large amounts of cash and custom expensive jewelry. This would give off the impression that King Vaughn is funding and rewarding members of the Oblock Street Gang for their work and loyalty. King Vaughn would also start up Get Back Gang Entertainment in an attempt to give top Oblock members a rap career in order to increase the gang's notoriety both on a street and mainstream level while monetizing it in the process. A very dark turning point in the story would occur on August 4th, 2020, when King Vaughn's most notorious rival, FBG Duck, was murdered in broad daylight while out shopping at the Gold Coast Luxury Shopping District in Chicago, Illinois. King Vaughn's music made multiple references to FBG Duck and the 63rd and St. Lawrence Gang, making both FBG Duck and his block the subject of many disrespectful jokes and memes online. The most popular instance of this is in King Vaughn's Took Her to the O, a song that describes Vaughn getting confronted by a man rumored to be FBG Duck and the situation ends up turning violent. Rumors on what exactly happened to FBG Duck would begin spreading online with the most popular narrative being that King Vaughn and Oblock were responsible for the murder of FBG Duck. Fans all across the world really started to believe and see with their own eyes that King Vaughn and Little Dirk were possibly the most dangerous men in hip hop. Then just nine days later after the murder of FBG Doug, Little Dirk would arguably have the most important moment in his career take place when he would be featured on Drake's hit song, Laugh Now, Cry Later. The Drake collaboration would bring a whole new massive audience to Little Dirk and his music sending eager fans down rabbit holes only to discover that Lil Durk and his associates have extremely dark pasts involving lots of violence and even death. 
Little Dirk and King Vaughn would take all the attention they were getting from both the Drake collaboration and the FBG Duck situation to double down on their Savage Street reputations, regardless of the fact that the two were both very well aware that they were on bond and being heavily monitored by authorities. Another ad. King Vaughn would even record himself getting off a plane only to be greeted by law enforcement officers with badges. Officers trying to search me for the plane. They talk about let me search your bag out. Let me get y'all ID one more time before I leave. Take picture of my badge. Y'all want to search me for what? Remember, it's space. It wasn't too long before the ship began to sink. On November 6th, 2020, King Vaughn would get into an altercation with Quando Rondo, a rapper with close ties to NBA Youngboy, another rapper in which Vaughn had problems with behind the scenes. This split-second altercation outside of the Monaco Hookah Lounge in Atlanta would abruptly end with Quando Rondo's right-hand man, Lil Tim, fatally shooting King Vaughn. Lil Dirk would then release his highly anticipated album, The Voice, a little over a month later which featured some quite telling lyrics. On the song, should have Duck, the song whose title is already a diss in itself. Dirk says, I told my PO through the gate that I get high as she asked me how high do I get, I told her high as duck. Dirk also says, they asked me where I'm gonna be in 10 years, I said the feds. These lyrics came off to most fans as Lil Dirk, somewhat accepting the fact that his one of a kind hip hop run, will ultimately come to an end with him receiving a hefty prison sentence. Seven months after King Von's sudden death, Lil Dirk's brother D Thang would also be shot and killed outside of a nightclub called Club O in Harvey, Illinois. While losing another person so close to you is already a lot to deal with in itself, it must be even more difficult to deal with when a lot of the speculation of why D Thang was killed in the first place was because rival gang members have a tough time getting to Lil Dirk due to his celebrity status, so his enemies just got the next closest thing. A few weeks later, Trouble would continue to follow Lil Durk after his Atlanta mansion was broken into by alleged enemies of Lil Durk. Shots were reportedly fired in the home by Durk's girlfriend, India, but it was rumored that this would just be a cover-up in order to prevent Lil Durk from getting arrested since he was already a felon on bond. The dominoes would proceed to fall, but on a whole nother level this time, because on October 13, 2021, the FBI would raid Oak Block and arrest five members of the street gang for the murder of FBG Duck. The most notable of the five arrested was Muwap, King Vaughn's right-hand man. This wouldn't come as a surprise to most drill fans, as there was many pieces of evidence that hinted at Oak Block being behind the FBG Duck murder. One interesting piece worth mentioning is the fact that King Vaughn gave Muwap his iced out O Block chain just 11 days after the murder of FBG Duck. King Vaughn would also start shouting out Muwap more than ever on his story and had him in the studio with him at just about all times. This Muwap, he crazy. He got all type of fucking on his Muwap was also one of the most fearless out of the group when King Vaughn was shot and even punched Quano Rondo in the head in order to help Vaughn. The federal indictment revealed that they were all being watched prior to the FBG duck incident, indicating that if King Von were still alive today, he most likely would have been sitting in the same jail as Muwa at this exact moment. So with all of this chaos going on, it left most fans wondering whatever happened to Lil Dirk, King Von, and Bezu's case in Atlanta. Well, back in 2021, the victim of the case, Alexander Weatherspoon, would be arrested on federal charges after allegedly stealing multiple identities and using them to fraudulently obtain money in order to purchase various luxurious items. The victim plays a big role in convicting the defendants in a criminal case, so having him in federal custody as well as the chaos that came with 2020 on a global scale most likely slowed down any proceedings of the case. Then on October 24th, 2022, 
It would officially be announced that after over three years since the original incident at the varsity happened, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office would drop all of the charges against Little Dirk and Basu. The Fulton County District Attorney was not shy in stating that King Vaughn would have been indicted for the incident if he were still alive today, which could potentially indicate that Dirk's legal team put all the blame of the shooting on Vaughn since he had passed away. Damn. Fans online would be a That's exactly what happened, too. I'm not going to hold you. I don't give a fuck with nobody from his camp to see this video. <clears throat> That man snaked Vaughn after he died. That's how the charges got dropped. Because how the fuck all of a sudden after three years, this man dead, now all the charges dropped. But you fucking read it. Or you told your people and your people read it. Ain't no fucking way the charges gonna get dropped. You would've got you would've got charged for something, my nigga, because you were still there and you were still busting. You opened your mouth on some shit. That's crazy. Attic at the news claiming this is great for Lil Dirk and that it must be a huge weight lifted off his shoulders. But just because the state dropped the charges doesn't mean that he's fully in the clear. Since the charges were dismissed and the defendants were not found guilty, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for the state to intentionally drop the case if they knew it could be a part of a much, much bigger case. You know, maybe like a RICO. Only time will tell, but many credible individuals with close ties to these situations seem to be hinting at the fact that Lil Dirk's problems may have only just begun. Let me also give a very big warning. I fear that 2023 is the year that Lil Dirk may be involved in some legal shit. The feds have set the seats to try to connect a lot of crime. And I know Lil Dirk these days says, yo, these lyrics are just props. He even says in the song, the cops are smarter. They know who he's beefing with. They know where the body's being dropped. Lil Dirk, I feel like if they hit Dirk with some shit, it's gonna be enough. They, they gonna hit him with just everything. Hey, that's real shit though. Look, bruh, this shit ought to be knowing. DJ Academics be knowing some shit on that thing, bruh. He probably got some inside information. That's why he like, you feel me? He threw that out there to try to tell that dirt know a Rico coming for your ass. But I don't know. I, I just feel a little fishy about that last part. About how the three years when um, King Von died, not all charges get dropped against everybody else. Shit, some ain't right. I mean, then again, hell, it could just been God on his side again. Blessed him, you know what I'm saying? Shit, and feared they found out that it was fun. They really did it or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak to him. I'm just getting my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Y'all jump in the comment section below. Let me know what y'all think, man. Um, Like I said, follow me on Instagram, man. Follow me on all my social media. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Let's run it up, man. Let's hit a million views on one of these videos. Man, let's go viral. Let's skyrocket. 2023, we taking over. I can't say too much, you know what I'm saying, but just know I got a lot planned for 2023, and we will be at 100,000 subscribers this time next year. I'm telling y'all, mark my words. Like, it's over with. Like, you feel me? I'm feeling good. I got the energy, you know what I'm saying? I'm moving smart. I'm thinking smart. I'm grinding. I'm putting stuff in motion. I'm putting stuff in play. And guys see me really taking it serious for real, for real, because I ain't gonna lie, over these years, I really just, like, been bullshitting, like, for real, for real. But now it's really time to, yeah, it's really time to dig deep in this shit. So we digging deep, man. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Gang, y'all make sure y'all show me some love. Big one, I'm out.